10 Mysterious Shipwrecks on Google Earth. Number 10. The SS Mahino in New Zealand We begin with a lesser known and sad shipwreck story, one recorded by both New Zealand's history and now Google's satellites. The SS Mahino began as a regular passenger ship. Then, during World War I, the New Zealand authorities took it over and converted it into a floating hospital. It survived the war, helping to save many lives in the process, and after it was over, it was converted back into being a passenger carrying ship. Finally, beginning to show the ship's age, in 1935 the ship was sold as scrap metal to a shipbreaking company from Osaka. Unfortunately, this old ship never made it to its final destination. According to the Atlas Obscura, the SS Mahino and the Una, the ship that was towing it, both got hit by a cyclone. The cyclone severed the tow line between the ships, destroying their connection. Three days after the storm, the SS Mahino and its crew were found stranded on a beach in Australia on the shore of Fraser Island off the coast of Queensland. That's where the satellites were able to capture this image. Oh. And now on to some viewers' comments from a previous video. We'd like to thank viewers Luanda Bell and Dream Dragon for their conversation about terrifying snakes. In answer to this comment, Dream Dragon is technically correct. This is a very recent development. Rattlesnakes used to always rattle, but in recent years they've stopped because it gives away their location. They can better adapt if they sneak up on people. Yet another way to remember that things in nature very rarely stay the same, and you always have to be careful out there. Number 9. The Staten Island Boat Graveyard A nautical magazine writer once called this place an accidental marine museum. This strange landmark on the shore of southern Staten Island oh. in New York was founded by John J. Witt back in the 1930s. Mr. Witt refused to dismantle any of the ships that were towed in unless he already had a buyer for the scrap metal. Soon, supply began outstripping the demand, so the rusty old wrecks just kept on accumulating. And before they could turn around, the Whip Marine Equipment Company had more ships and boats on their hands than they could disassemble even if somebody actually wanted them all. According to a report done by the New York Times in 1990, some of those rusty old husks date back all the way to before World War I. Eventually, nature began to take its course and the shipwrecks became a habitat for various local underwater marine life. Environmental protection laws soon followed, and nowadays there is a complete ban on moving or damaging any of these old hulls. The marine graveyard site is now known as Don John Recycling. Number 8. The SS Palo Alto in California This entry is actually a fairly famous one. The SS Palo Alto is a specific type of vessel called a concrete tanker. Yes, it is actually made out of concrete, and it was made during World War I in order to oppose the Central Forces. There was a big shortage of steel during the war, so constructing new vessels presented quite a headache. The Emergency Fleet Corporation, which was formed under President Woodrow Wilson, decided to solve this problem by ordering 24 new ships made out of ferro-concrete, with steel only used to reinforce them. The SS Palo Alto was made in Oakland, but the war ended before it could ever be actually used in battle. In 1929, the Cal Nevada Company moved it to Aptos, California, and the next year a pier was built to reach it. The ship went on to become a popular tourist attraction, but it was also an environmental hazard. They dealt with some of these issues in 2006, but it's still a mess. In January of this year, a storm tore off the stern and tossed it aside in the ocean. Number 7. The SS Francisco Morazan the haunting wreck of the SS Francisco Morazan isn't off the coast of any seaside beach, unlike most of these entries. The remains of this ship actually lie on the bottom of Lake Michigan, where they wound up after running aground in 1960, getting caught in a violent snowstorm. According to the National Park Service, it was carrying 940 tons of cargo, and it left Chicago on November 27th of 1960, headed for Holland. However, the very next day, the winds rose up and went wild. 
blowing at a rate of 40 miles an hour and bringing loads of water onto the ship. Add to it the snow and the heavy fog which covered everything, and the result was inevitable. In such low visibility, the crew couldn't navigate properly, and the ship ran aground by South Manitou Island. Luckily, the crew survived this endeavor, choosing to abandon the ship. However, since the vessel's owners never stepped forward to claim what was left of it, it remained stuck in the lake, and eventually became the home to birds such as seagulls and cormorants. Number 6. The Abandoned Saint in Southern Argentina Okay, so it's not an actual saint, but this unfortunate vessel is called Saint Christopher, and it was abandoned in 1957. It was a rescue tug, built by Americans, which served in the British Royal Navy during World War II as part of the Lend-Lease Act. After the war, this tugship was decommissioned by the Royal Navy and sold to a man in Buenos Aires. He had chartered it for salvage operations, but the ship never made it. It suffered engine damage and rudder damage in the Beagle Channel by Ushuaia, ran ashore, and was abandoned. It has stayed in the port in southern Argentina ever since then, being a photo model for many eager and curious tourists. Since the ship's deterioration posed an environmental hazard, its remaining fuel was completely drained back in 2004. Number 5. The Skeleton Shipwrecks of the Atlantic Just north of Luteritz in Namibia lies a piece of earth so notorious with such a nasty hexed reputation that it actually got named the Skeleton Coast. This eerie, almost 1,000 mile long coastline is littered with shipwrecks and the remains of older shipwrecks all along its length. The rusty, rotten remains of hulls that protrude out of the sand at every step have really earned the place its creepy name. The reason for all these is a horribly thick fog that is more or less always there. It forms from the hot dry air from the Namib Desert clashing with the cold currents of the Atlantic. In an article by BBC, it was mentioned that a local tribe of hunters and gatherers, the Khoisan Bushmen, called the Skeleton Coast the land that God created in anger, which is completely understandable. The coastline and the surrounding land are brimming not only with shipwrecks, but also with dead plants and enormous beached whale bones. Number 4. The Point San Pablo Barrier Hulls the Point San Pablo is a yacht harbor located in Richmond, California. The shipwrecks that are stuck in it, however, were actually dragged there on purpose as an engineering trick. They serve as breakwaters, barriers which are set in place to protect the harbor from the relentless assault of waves coming in from the San Francisco Bay. The man who founded this particular marina, Captain Raymond Clark, actually couldn't afford to build a standard breakwater levee, so he came up instead with this ingenious solution. According to Point San Pablo's Yacht Arbor's website, he got himself several doomed wooden schooners and towed them all into the location where he intended to build his marina. The vessel graveyard is a popular tourist destination, described as quite picturesque and it's also a popular spot for fishermen oh. who are out to get some striped bass, which are notably abundant in this area. 3. The Discoverer Which Didn't Sail the World Welcome to the Solomon Islands in the Pacific Ocean. Sitting stranded just off the shore of one of them is the bleached, bone-white hull of a Danish cruise ship the MS World Discoverer. It was constructed in 1974 and became famous after it was featured in one of the programs on the History Channel. The World Discoverer was on one of its cruises in the year 2000 when it was struck by disaster. It struck a rock and was badly damaged. The crew quickly sent out a distress signal and everyone both the crew themselves and the passengers were safely transported onto another passenger ferry. It has remained stuck in Roderick Bay ever since, and the tropical vegetation which has possessed the decks has become a popular photography site for tourists. There were some attempts to salvage the ship, but they weren't successful, because most of the ship was damaged and looted during the Solomon Islands Civil War. Have you ever come across something weird on Google Earth? What was it? Tell us about what you saw in the comments below, and your story could be featured in one of our future videos. Number 2. The Half Moon Schooner Yacht 
Florida's Museums in the Sea tells a story of a sunken yacht from the period before World War I. Well, it's actually a schooner yacht, to be more precise, with two masts. Believe it or not, this boat used to be a racing vessel, which is pretty impressive considering that it's a lump of 366 tons of steel. The ship was built in Germany way back in 1908 and its original name was Germania. During World War I, however, it was seized by England, sold off, and renamed into the Half Moon. The newly named vessel was sailed down to Miami, and during the Prohibition era, it was repurposed for entertainment, serving as a floating cabaret. It met its demise in 1930, when a horrible storm ran it aground. The Half Moon sank, and nowadays its watery grave is considered an archaeological preserve. The shipwreck is open to the public and can be visited by divers and snorkelers. Number 1. The USS Utah Memorial The USS Utah was a dreadnought battleship, but ironically enough, it wasn't active in service when it was sunk. It was on standby as an auxiliary ship, according to the Pacific Aviation Museum in Hawaii. During the Pearl Harbor attack on December 7, 1941, it was sunk by the Japanese torpedo bombers. Records state that over 64 crewmen perished in this attack, and 58 of them went underwater with the ship when it sank. One of the worst parts of this attack? The bombing was a complete accident. The USS Utah wasn't even planned for the attack because it wasn't an active ship at the time. Thanks for watching down the rabbit hole. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Coming up next. There are plenty of mysteries in our seas and oceans, but even more when you look up. Take a look at some of the craziest ones captured in our video, 12 Mysterious Things Caught in the Sky on Camera. See you all there. The Strange Looking Lights. UFOlogists have claimed that the strange looking lights that were spotted over Arizona were simply an alien spaceship arriving on our planet from an alternate dimension through a portal in the sky or a wormhole. Most viewers of the video are convinced that this video is a hoax, mainly because there are